Hi, Frédéric. Hi, Hanan. How are you today? I'm quite well. And you? I'm good. Uh, so today my guest is Frédéric Semet. He's full professor at Centrale Lille, France. He's also deputy director of the Lille Research Center in Computer Science, Signal and Automation, known as Cristal, gathering about 200 professors and researchers. His main research activities are in the field of combinatorial optimization, applied to location problems, transportation network design problems, and vehicle routing problems. Frédéric is and has been involved in various grant-funded and collaborative projects with transportation and logistics companies. In addition, he is a member of the steering committees of the Verilog from Euro and of the Groupe de Recherche and Recherche Operationnelle of the CNRS. Frédéric has authored or co-authored more than 75 scientific papers or book chapters. He has been an associate editor or member of the editorial board of Advances in OR, CNOR, and Infor. Frédéric received the President Medal of the British OR Society in 1999 and was awarded the first prize for scientific contribution to the Euro Rodef 2016 Challenge. Frédéric, it's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you so much for accepting Thank the invitation. You. Thank you so much, Anand. It's a pleasure. Yeah. Uh, so let's start. So Frédéric, uh, you studied in Switzerland. Your wife is from Belgium. You did your postdoc in Montreal in Canada. And you live in France. From which of these French-speaking countries are you actually from? <laughs> well, uh, in fact, I am from France. Uh -huh. uh, uh, I am from Lyon in the southeast of France. Ah, OK. This is my native uh, city. Mm -hmm. And could you tell uh, a bit of your family background, uh, starting with your parents? Yes, for sure. Uh, my uh, father uh, was an, um, was working for the CNRS in France, so for the Cent National Center for Scientific Research. He got a PhD in chemistry, and he was an expert in uh, what is called microanalysis and uh, organic uh, chemistry. Uh, my mother uh, basically stay at home, taking care of uh, her children, my brother and, and I. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I, I assume your, your dad did his PhD uh, maybe in the 50s or uh, 60s? And uh, I no, lately, in fact, lately. Mm -hmm. uh, he started uh, as an engineer first, and then he got his PhD uh, beginning of the 70s. Ah, okay, because I think chemistry was quite popular at that time uh, as, a, as a career. Yes, uh, in fact, uh, by this time when he was uh, uh, doing his uh, studies, he, um, chemistry was like a computer scientist, science nowadays. Uh, speci especially in Lyon, because in Lyon there were uh, many large manufacturers in chemistry. Uh, and uh, so all, uh, let's say, bright young people uh, wanted to go to these uh, study this subject. And uh, he was one of them, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, my dad also got a PhD in chemistry in the early 70s. Uh, and my mom also, she has a PhD, but only, only later she got. Uh, and tell me about your mom. So my, my mom stay at home, as I told you. Uh, she was quite interested in many things related to arts. She was not an artist, but she uh, was interested in all kinds of manual works, including drawing, and uh, she's really, she was really fond of literature, so she spent a lot of time reading books from everywhere in the world. Uh, um, so your dad was more into science and your mom was more into arts? Exactly. My dad was in science and my, f the, on the, my family, uh, on the side of my dad, the family was more interested in the sciences. Uh, some of my cousins are uh, doctors uh, or uh, dent dentists or and uh, even my brother 
did his study in uh, physics. Uh, so on the on the my on the side of my dad, it was science, and on the side of my mother, it was arts. Uh, my mother was, as I told you, interested in uh, in uh, in literature a lot. My grandmother was a good uh, amateur, good pianist, an amateur one, but a good pianist. Uh, and uh, and yes, so it was a, a balance between arts and science. Yeah, good mix. Uh, you you mentioned uh, that your brother uh, studied physics, and did he also become a scholar like you? Yes, yes, yes. In fact, uh, my brother is uh, in Lyon working at the university. He, he got a PhD in uh, nanotechnology and uh, now he is an associate professor there in Lyon. Ah, so he is sev- still in Lyon. Mm-hmm. So 75% of the family has a PhD degree? Yes, yeah. Yeah. If you include my wife, you will even increase ah. a little bit. <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, the, 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 the four of you uh, from, from... Yeah, 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 yeah yes. exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, uh, so Frédéric, you, you were born uh, in 1963, and how yeah. was life in uh, Lyon? You mentioned you're from Lyon uh, during the 60s and 70s. Uh, well, I can just uh, tell you about my own experience for sure, but uh, as a kid, it was, it was very, very, very nice. In fact, uh, Lyon is a very nice city, very well located, close to the sea, to the Mediterranean Sea. Um, my uh, uh, family on my mother's side was from Provence, so from Avignon, not very far from Avignon. So we go, we we went to Provence many times during the year. And uh, on the other side, uh, you have uh, mountains. So it's uh, very well located. You can go there for the winter. And um, but Lyon, by it says, it's a very nice city because he, he, you have two rivers in Lyon. So uh, and um, I have the opportunity to live close to one of them, just in front of the river, which is called uh, the Rhone. And uh, so it was a very nice environment, and uh, I had a lot of friends. So it. Uh, I had a good time there. Very nice. Uh, did you have any hobbies back in the day? Uh, yes. Uh, in fact, I was uh, mainly interested in regarding sports. I was mainly interested in, uh, in skiing. So uh, since the mountain was not very far, we went there during the for the weekend or during the holidays sometimes for all winter's holidays, so uh, for Christmas, during the winter break, so we ski a lot. And uh, during the summer, uh, we uh, I was found about uh, sailing. So uh, I do that with my brother, both, both activities with my brother. Um, we practiced uh, sailing uh, in Brittany. Uh, my um, parents used to go almost every year in Brittany for the summer vacation. So uh, we uh, we just uh, practice uh, sailing on what's called a sailing dinghy. Uh, uh, you can see this type of boat boats at, at the Olympics. Uh, those names are the four seven o or four two o. This type of uh, boat, which were which were. I think uh, built for the first time in the 60s. It was, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, so the two of you, uh, you and your brother, clearly followed your dad's steps. Uh, yeah. But have you been somehow influenced by, let's say, the art side coming from your mother? Um, yes, somehow, because as you can imagine, uh, I, I was quite, it was quite unclear when I was a teenager if I would like to go for science or for something like literature. Um, At school, I was uh, not among the top, but I was um, at the high school, I mean. I was among what was called by this time the good students, and I have equal opportunities in terms of selecting 
either sciences or literature. So um, I remember when I was 16, uh, it was a big decision to, to, to take. Uh, do I go uh, for science uh, or do I go for literature? And well, you know, the pressure of the father plus some interest clearly, uh, uh, the result was I go for sciences. Mm -hmm. Did you have interest in literature, history and all these things? Yes, this, these are my uh, favorite uh, hobbies. If I, uh, now I, I, re I still read a lot, uh, not as much as I can because uh, I have <laughs> as everyone a limited amount of time for this, but I'm quite interested in literature and in, in history. Uh, and the, both of the, these can be mixed. I, lead, I read a lot of books related to history or based on it, it, history uh, facts. Mm. So, uh, yeah, but I am still interested in this subject quite mm. a lot. Mm -hmm. right and what type of music did you like to listen in those days? Uh, when I was 16, you know, uh, um, my, as I told you, to understand is uh, my mother was fond of classical music. So I think that I was, uh, with this respect, uh, a little bit a rebel. So I, on my side, I was listening to uh, hard rock uh, groups, such as Van Allen, uh, Scorpion, uh, and so on. So something very different, but I think it was just uh, for the contrast. Because today I'm 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 back to my classical music, and I'm listening a lot of classical music as well. But you know, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And what differences do you see between the French kids from your generation and those from the current generation? Well, uh, th uh, there are there are many differences. I have the feeling that first of all. Um, when I was a teenager in Lyon, I was really free. I go out a lot with my friends. Um, we don't, we clearly, we do not, we didn't have those uh, uh, social networks. And so when, okay, we can call each other, uh, but most of the time uh, we, we met. So we, uh, we went, uh, for the afternoon at the at the home of uh, our friends of, of some friends and so we have a lot of uh, exchange like that uh, so that we have a really a social life uh, I mean a real one not a, an, a, an artificial one which was I think richer uh, I compare with my uh, children right now uh, they have their friends, but they interact with them mainly through those uh, uh, social networks and not uh, not in, uh, in, uh, with real uh, contacts, not so much. The other difference is, I think, main difference is we were uh, really interested in culture. Maybe it's me, but uh, so we went a lot to the, to the cinema, to the theater, to the museum. Uh, so we have, yeah, we have a lot of um, time uh, in those uh, in those activities. Mm. So let's say less distractions compared to the kids today. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Uh, did you enjoy going to school? Uh, and were you a good student? Uh, uh, yes. Yes, uh, I enjoyed going to school. Yes, I, well, I was um, not really contactable. Uh, I, I, have my, uh, I had my friends and uh, I was in a good high school in Lyon. So, yes, I like that a lot. I have very nice professor, I must say. Very passionate professor, so it helps a lot, I think. Um, and so, yes, I, I, I liked uh, that a lot. Um, do I was a good student? I think I was a Yes, I was good, but not top. Mm. Uh, maybe uh, mainly because I was n um, for the, the the exam, I was always a little bit slow. Mm -hmm. um, 
I remember many times, uh, well, uh, the, the professor mentioning, well, what you do, Frederick, is, is good, but it's not enough. So it, by this time, it was really my main uh, default. I was a little bit slow, and um, so I get good marks, but not the, the best ones. Mm. And have you considered pursuing a career in chemistry like your dad? Uh, in fact, uh, in fact, no. Um, um, on my dad almost uh, uh, for forbid us to uh, to follow a, a career in chemistry. <laughs> One chemist in the in the family uh, was enough, I think. Ah, uh, okay. Mm. And did you attend a preparatory class uh, before you joined university? That is pretty common in France, right? Well, it depends. If we, you want to go to uh, those uh, engineering schools, uh, top engineering schools in France, yes, you have to go to preparatory classes. Uh, it takes uh, two years, uh, during which uh, you have to work very hard, mainly um, math, physics, literature, and uh, normally English. You have English courses, so it's uh, really focused on a limited. At least at during at my time, now it has it has changed a lot, mm. but it was really focused on a very small number of subjects, mm. and do um, you do that uh, intensively during uh, two years? Uh, what I mean by intensively is basically, it's like if you enter a monastery, you do that and nothing else. Ah. Yeah, yeah. You, you just forget about uh, friends, uh, cinema. Uh, well, you can have some, but uh, that's uh, uh, the very limited. Very limited. Uh -huh. Yes. And and why did you pick an engineering degree? And why did you go to Switzerland for that? Well, that's that's. Uh, Basically, because my father was working by this time with a researcher in Lausanne. And after my second year uh, at, the, at the preparatory uh, classes, um, I have the choice for some uh, engineering school, but not on subject I was uh, really interested in. Uh, and uh, my as a, my father was working with this researcher in Lausanne in the chemistry department, and he told me, well, you know, uh, there is this school, uh, the uh, EPFL in Lausanne. Uh, maybe you could, you should consider uh, it uh, if you pass uh, the the entry exam. Uh, you can uh, you can choose the subject you are going to. Uh, in which you are going to have your diploma and uh, I was mainly interested in math so uh, and there, there there is a math department at, at uh, EPFL and you can have a degree in uh, applied math an engineering degree in applied math so that's why at the end I, I decided okay I, I, I'm going to EPFL mm -hmm. and it was a good choice mm -hmm. Did you become a better student uh, at university? Uh, yes, definitely, definitely. I think uh, this is due to the to these preparatory uh, 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 classes. Um, you know, uh, this uh, really changed uh, my mind. Uh, and, um, how you how, how you can work or how you, how you must work. Um, and uh, and uh, I, I became by this time uh, uh, among the best students in my uh, in, in in the math department. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How was your introduction to OR? Oh, that was it was very very nice. This is a very good memory. Uh, it was an afternoon. Uh, it was the first course. In, uh, in September, in an afternoon, uh, in a big uh, amphitheater, uh, we were a mix of uh, computer uh, students, uh, computer science students, and math uh, students. And uh, the first lecture was uh, 
given by Dominique de Vera and he introduced us to uh, Operation Research and basically what he gave as far as I remember are examples of related to linear programming. Um, he gave us, that for sure gave us an example um, related to project management. Uh, one example I think related to some uh, production uh, production uh, planning and at the end of the lecture I, uh, I said to myself well this is fantastic I want to do that this was really a revelation really 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 uh, really a revelation and uh, when I uh, went back to Lyon and I talked with my family and I said okay I, I have found what I want to do in life I want to study operation research and uh, work on um, in this domain and, um, the, and it, it was done yeah that's excellent uh, is it true that you used to show the OR models to your grandfather yeah that's why th th during when i go back to lyon uh, my grandfather uh, used to be a manager uh, and a, a, a manager uh, on the technical side so uh, he was managing uh, inventory for the French railway companies and uh, I show us um, I show him uh, the what uh, uh, I, I had during the lecture and I uh, and it was not a it was it was good in math but not so so good and yeah, I say, okay, the, look at that. It, this is fantastic. I show him the uh, the model, and uh, and uh, I remember uh, some weeks later, I tell me, well, you know, there is something I, I did during my career. Uh, you know, we we sort these items, these products according to the ABC classification. And years later, I used for my uh, degree, uh, for my uh, to, to get my engineering degree, mm -hmm. I used this ABC classification. <laughs> nice. Uh, did you take part of any research projects uh, before starting the PhD? Uh, yes. In fact, in Lausanne, it was very interesting because each semester we had a a uh, small research project to do um, most of the time with uh, with a friend and uh, those was related to sometimes with to really practical um, uh, project the first one i did uh, was related to uh, a company called metalor and it was the idea it was to determine their production planning they were producing gold metal or oh, I mean gold in french so they were producing gold and when you produce gold um, uh, you can you never have pure gold you can mix something else within the gold because you know you have these 99.99 but there is a those this small amount of something purity yeah of purity so they have this type different type of gold with different level of purity and they want to mix them in such a way they produce mm. units with a given purity this was true for gold and for uh, silver too so basically it was a very large uh, linear programming model nothing else and it it was my first project i did with one of my friends by this time and uh, it was it was the beginning but uh, we each semester we had such a project to do mm. and it was very uh, uh, very good for us to, mm. to do those projects mm. And what was your main motivation for pursuing a PhD degree? Um, in fact, I think uh, uh, um, I understand quite rapidly that without a PhD in operation research, it's quite difficult to find a job in operation research. Mm. So that was my main uh, motivation. 
uh, I was quickly uh, influ uh, influenced by my father, that's for sure, because in, in chemistry, if you don't have a PhD, uh, you are not a chemist, basically. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, so uh, he told me, you know, maybe you are, you have to go a little bit deeper on this subject to know more things, and um, so that's why many my motivation. Uh, uh, that's what off was from one side, and from the other side, which is not so uh, so nice. I had to do my military service. And uh, in, by this time, you have this uh, possibility in France to do your military, your military service in some foreign countries. Switzerland was clearly a foreign country with respect to France. So uh, the, doing um, a PhD in Switzerland was a good opportunity to do first your PhD and second your military service by the same time. Uh. So that's why, <laughs> that's why I, I did a PhD. Ah, okay. Uh, uh, who was your PhD advisor? Uh, my PhD uh, was, advisor was uh, Dominique de Vera. Mm. Uh, Dominique was, uh, is, excuse me, is a great guy. Mm -hmm. And what did you uh, learn from him and what opportunities did he open for you? Uh, I learned a lot, even if uh, Dominique was mainly working on graph theory, uh, but also on scheduling. One thing he, um, he uh, learned to me is maybe when you have a problem, uh, you can uh, tackle it by di using different uh, perspectives. For sure, for typically you can uh, use linear programming, this is one uh, possibility, or uh, uh, integer programming, or you can try to formulate it as a graph problem on a graph, and sometimes you are able to do it and uh, to design efficient algorithm for that, for the, your problem. So that's a uh, I think that's what one of the things he uh, he, he learned to me, uh, and uh, it was for him it was really a game, you know. It was like some challenge, some little challenge. It's it look to this problem, and uh, at the end, uh, on uh, the corner of a paper, he showed us uh, we were mini PhD students. Well, you see, you can model it like this and not like your big uh, LP model. You can just uh, play with graphs and it, it's just a graph problem. So, uh, yes, we, we, we did that a lot. Uh, and the other thing is Dominic uh, uh, had a fantastic uh, network. Many, many friends. So we had in Lausanne, and uh, in winter schools, which were organized by him and by the other professor in operation research, Tom Liebling, we had a great, great professor. So we had the opportunity to meet many very famous people, uh, to quote some of them. Uh, we, uh, we met uh, in graph, clearly uh, Claude Berge, Peter Hammer, Fashek Schwatal, uh, in integral programming, Paolo Tot, uh, Pierre Hansen, graph and integral programming. So many, many people. Mm -hmm. And by the way, uh, uh, a, f a friend of mine, uh, Martin Labbe, we wish, wish, uh, who was uh, a little bit younger by this time. <laughs> And what was your PhD research about? My PhD research uh, was about uh, vehicle routing. In fact, uh, when uh, I was uh, recruited by Dominique as a PhD student, um, in fact, the position in uh, by this time at UPFL was assistant. I was uh, one of his assistants. Um, 
he uh, told me he had this project with uh, a company called uh, Cop, which wa was a grocery uh, store, a chain of grocery stores. And um, they wanted to have some help uh, with the design of fruits for their vehicles. They, they had a depot in Lausanne and they de deliver all uh, French speaking uh, part of Switzerland from Lausanne. So we, uh, we had to, de to design routes. So uh, I worked on that. Uh, it was a quite a challenging problem because it was a real one, a real one, real life one. Um, maybe uh, uh, this is uh, in my thesis, I introduced what is known now as the truck and trailer routing problem because uh, they have truck and trailers uh, and uh, basically, uh, when you go to the mountain in Switzerland, at some point you you have to leave the trailer and the truck just do the tour, serving the stores in the mountain, then go back to the valley, couple the trailer and start again the, its route. So uh, yeah, I introduced this problem. It was introduced in my in my PhD thesis. Mm -hmm. And how did you solve the problem? By this time in Lausanne, uh, you you had two groups. Uh, one was called Rose, and the other one was called Roseau. The Rose was the group of Dominique. Roseau was the group of uh, Tom. And uh, Roseau was uh, many working on mathematical programming and, from an heuristic point of view, on simulated annihilation. And all, uh, in, uh, in Rose, in our group, uh, with Dominique, we were working uh, with uh, Taboo Search. So the, uh, well, the natural uh, path uh, was to develop some Taboo Search algorithm to solve this problem. In fact, uh, it was uh, what is called now a math heuristic because we have some mathematical uh, uh, programming uh, procedure within the this taboo search, mm -hmm. and this is uh, how we uh, we solve the problem. Mm -hmm. you, know. you also worked with Eric Taya during your PhD, correct? Yes, in fact, the first paper we uh, I had is with Eric. Uh, Eric uh, studied uh, computer science in Lausanne, and he was also a, an assistant of uh, Dominique. Mm -hmm. So we work on this uh, subject uh, together and uh, we uh, wrote together uh, the, the first paper uh, explaining how you can solve vehicle routing with uh, using taboo search. Uh, and how was the experience of writing your first paper? Um, frankly, it was terrible, <laughs> um, uh, but, but very nice. Terrible because our English by this time uh, was not uh, so good, so it takes a lot of time. Uh, but it was a nice experience because we really wrote the paper together. I mean, uh, uh, close to each other, on, around the same table, uh, writing the introduction, blah blah blah, etc. And uh, we have a. Uh, some uh, good, uh, uh, some one who helped us a lot, because by this time uh, Fred Glover was visiting uh, Lausanne. So at some point he took our paper and just, uh, um, I mean, made a fantastic job. He corrected not the content but the English, mm -hmm. and uh, it uh, helped us a lot to uh, to have our first paper accepted oh, nice in, a, in, a, in an else of war else of war okay and and how was your first presentation in a conference uh stressful <laughs> I, I think the f uh, i uh, i gave my first presentation in small conferences in uh, switzerland and in france um, but the first big one 
uh, the first conference uh, was uh, at Tristan, the first Tristan in 91. It was uh, organized in Montreal and uh, Quebec City. And I gave my uh, first uh, presentation uh, in Quebec City at uh, Chateau Frontenac, which is a very nice uh, location. Uh, and uh, but uh, in the in the room, uh, there there were many very famous professors. It was the first Tristan. Uh, all the professor of uh, MIT. I don't remember all the names, but they were there. Uh, for sure, all professor of Lausanne, of um, excuse me, of Montreal were there. So many, many famous professor, and you are arrived with your taboo search. So something, uh, well, which is r really uh, something uh, new by this time, but not so popular. And um, you are a young uh, PhD student, so yeah, it's uh, it's stressful, <laughs> and you try to give some message uh, as much as you can, but uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And many colleagues from your generation attended the Euro Summer Institute. Uh, how about you? Yeah, uh, in fact, uh, it was my first in, uh, experience. Uh, um, the first time I, I left Lausanne for uh, some uh, scientific uh, activity, I, I had uh, the opportunity to go to a summer institute uh, devoted to decision support system, which was not really my subject, but uh, I, uh, I went uh, there in Portugal and uh, I basically I presented my work, to, uh, the work I did for my engineering degree uh, on uh, inventory management and uh, it was very nice and it was mainly the opportunity to meet uh, many people uh, i'm still in relation with them uh, maybe the one of the most famous one is uh, maria gracia speranza it's Caspia. i met her uh, during this summer institute so it is it is really a very good thing uh, uh, those summer institute uh, organized by uh, Euro. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Grace is very nice. Uh, she's one of my favorite uh, or uh, figures out there. So she's she's super yeah. nice. Yeah. Uh, how long did it take for you to complete your PhD? Well, in fact, it it took uh, five years. Uh, as an assistant in Lausanne, uh, you you had a contract for five years, so we, I take the five years. Um, uh, I must say that, um, in fact, with respect, uh, if I compare with um, the present time, these uh, led us to have more maturity um, in the sense that uh, when when you are doing your PhD for five years after a uh, after a time uh, you you understand how you can work by yourself so you don't need your sup supervisor so much uh, you uh, you are able to to see a little bit what could be of interest, what are the research questions. And yes, so you, you have more maturity. So when I left Lausanne, I think in many respects, I was more mature compared with, for typically with some of uh, the PhD students we have right now. And this is not their fault. I mean, a, a PhD now in France is uh, three years long so uh, after three years if you include the the fact that you have to write your phd thesis uh, well you have the maturity uh, you can have it's uh, it's mm. normal yeah nowadays is more paper oriented and maybe at that time was uh, more about having a good background and independence 
to do research? Clear, clearly, in fact, uh, and I think it, it was also the, the work, uh, part of the contribution of Dominique, uh, and uh, I must say uh, Tom, Lingling, Tom Liebling as well, they want to, sh we do not have really a, a doctoral program, very uh, focused, they try to open our mind as much as possible, and so we have, uh, as I told you, many uh, foreign visitors, and they taught us about subjects which are clearly in operation research, but not totally related to uh, the or uh, PhD subjects. Mm -hmm. And uh, yes, so you, uh, we, uh, it was uh, a very good thing. Yeah, so that helped you having a broader perspective of the field yeah yeah, yeah. Really. and you finished really. your phd with no paper published with your supervisor right yeah 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 we wrote something uh, but uh, together but uh, it, it is not it is published in an engineering uh, journal mm -hmm. not uh, in a scientific one ah okay but it was quite common by this way uh, uh, by this time in lausanne mm -hmm. yeah and what happened next uh, next, uh, in fact, uh, uh, at some point, I just uh, have some uh, contact with uh, Gilbert Laporte. Uh, he went to Lausanne um, in, uh, in the beginning of the 90s. And uh, my, uh, my friend Anna Hertz was by this time for, for his postdoc in uh, Montreal. And when I met uh, Gilbert, I uh, was quite interesting, interested in first working with him. And since Anna went to uh, Montreal, I thought it was maybe a good possibility to go to Montreal. I went to Montreal for, for Tristan, so I know a little bit, I knew a little bit the city. And uh, and uh, so it was uh, appealing and working with Gilbert was really an, an opportunity. Uh, by this time, uh, uh, Gilbert uh, has uh, written already a very large number of, of papers, um, some very, very nice. Uh, he had developed many branch and cut algorithms for the classical CVRP, for the distance constraint VRP, and many other things. So, uh, and um, I got an, um, a grant from, from the NSERC, so from Canada, and uh, I went to uh, Montreal for two years. Mm -hmm. uh, you, as worked, a postdoc. Mm -hmm. you worked with Michel too, right? Michel Gendreau? Yeah. 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 In fact, uh, when I say uh, I did my postdoc with Gilbert, it's uh, it's clear. But uh, Gil uh, Michel was always uh, around, mm -hmm. so we worked, in fact, a lot. Uh, the the three of us. And what did together. you learn? What did you learn from Gilbert and Michel? Well, lot of things. Um, first of all, uh, when I arrived, uh, Gilbert told me about a problem, I never heard about it, it was a covering to a problem, uh, that's, fir fir that's fir uh, first, and he told me, okay, we are going to develop a branch and cut, branch and bound, uh, I knew what it is, branch and cut, I know clearly Gomorrah cuts and things like that, uh, that's what's part of my background, but I was not so familiar with uh, polyhedro uh, analysis and all these subjects. So uh, I had to learn a lot about uh, how you can uh, prove that uh, constraint is a facet, is a valid inequality, uh, is a, a determine the dimension of a polyhedron, uh, all these things of a polytop, all these things. So uh, uh, I had to learn a lot. That one was one thing. Um, the second thing uh, I learned, uh, I learned it was uh, um, programming in C, because uh, I had 
to use Cplex and it was the first time uh, I, I used Cplex. And um, and last uh, with uh, with Gilbert, uh, I uh, I learned how to write a paper in a very uh, systematic way, and it was uh, just a, a fantastic experience. Yes, yes, I, I know more or less how it is. I had the chance to work with him a couple of times, so yeah, it's it's an interesting experience. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Um, it seems that you met someone very special in Montreal, correct? Uh, yes, indeed. Uh, I met my my wife in Montreal. Uh, met uh, Luce in Montreal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, How was it? Uh, <laughs> I can only say it was very nice. <laughs> <laughs> No, it 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 was it was uh, it was, uh, it, was uh, it was very nice. I met uh, her when uh, she came for an internship with um, Patrice Marcotte and Gilles Savard, and uh, she w was working on very different subjects with respect to mine. Uh, she was working uh, on traffic uh, management by this time, and then on bi-level programming. Mm -hmm. So uh, the subjects were were different, but we found uh, other common subject to talk about. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, who else you met there uh, that you became friends with? Uh, well, in fact, in this time, uh, by this time in Montreal, uh, I I, I met uh, Bernard Gendron. Uh, Bernard was uh, completing a, his PhD when I uh, arrived. And uh, and uh, other people like uh, Ismail Shamini. So we were a little group of uh, uh, PhD students and postdoc. Not so many postdoc, but uh, PhD students, and we had a lot of fun together. Mm -hmm. uh, were you able to find a permanent position there in Montreal? Uh, yes, in fact, uh, um, uh, after my my postdoc. I got my first uh, position as a full-time researcher, uh, but not in the computer science department, operation research and computer science department at the University of Montreal, but uh, in the health administration department. So this was a very strange thing uh, because uh, they, have, they had this guy was professor of operation research in this department. He was not uh, he was not doing uh, any research anymore. Uh, he got his PhD in Montreal with many people you know, uh, Francois Soumy, uh, uh, of this generation. But uh, he was not doing any research anymore, and he, he, he but he, he succeeded to add a position as a full-time researcher, and I, I got this position. Mm -hmm. And what type of problems uh, you start working uh, after joining the health administration department? Yeah, so I have to work on subject related to health management. And I had to work, uh, and, uh, and my background is in operation research, clearly. So that, that's what the time we start to work on ambulance location and relocation. I, w I worked on uh, nurse scheduling. And I worked also on another subject, uh, but uh, I have no paper on that, devoted to... Uh, uh, medicine unit uh, ranking. So you, mm -hmm. you you rank the the different units according to their performance. There are some um, algorithm to do that, and uh, you can do that. It was not very popular mm -hmm. for. Uh, and uh, that yes, it was the subject uh, I I tackled. Um, and um, uh, my friends uh, Gilbert Laporte and Michel Gendreau was clearly part of the of uh, of the of this project. Mm -hmm. 
But I worked a lot also with uh, Brigitte Joma on nurse scheduling. Mm -hmm. It was very nice. We developed some uh, extended uh, formulation for the nurse scheduling problem with a PhD student uh, called uh, C.V. Vovor, and uh, it was nice, mm. very nice project. Yeah. You're actually known for your work on the ambulance uh, routing and location and things like that, right? Yeah, yes, uh, we worked a lot and we tried to, um, we did uh, very different things uh, based on the, the data and on on the case of uh, Montreal, mm -hmm. um, we uh, we we propose this model, which is called the two-level model, in which you 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 want that uh, you answer a number of calls in a, a portion of t uh, a limited time. You don't have to answer all the calls, but you want answer at least a, a portion of the calls. Um, and uh, that's why one thing. Uh, and we also developed, uh, I think, uh, something which which was quite new uh, by this time is some uh, real fleet management mm -hmm. algorithm uh, using uh, parallel computing um to uh, basically to manage the fleet in real time so you assign a, ve a vehicle as soon uh, as soon as you receive the call and the idea in this algorithm was to compute in advance all the relocating uh, policies in such a way that when you receive the call you assign the ambulance and immediately you have the relocation policies between the ambulances you want uh, you uh, to apply right um, so eventually you went back to France uh, why did you decide to do that well uh, at some point we had to find a position uh, my wife my wife and I and um, and also for family reason uh, we decided to come back to come back in, uh, to mm -hmm. France. so you went to Valenciennes right yes yeah. We had our first positions in Valenciennes. Yeah, you, sp you spent an uh, entire decade there. Uh, yeah. And from your CV, I can see that you work a lot on problems related to logistics. Uh, could you give more details uh, about them, including also the solution approaches you developed at that time? Uh, yes. Uh, um, in the Valenciennes, I worked uh, mainly on two or three main subjects, I will say. The the first one, uh, which is more theoretical, uh, um, uh, I collaborated with uh, um, people in Lille, uh, man, mainly El Ghazali Talbi, uh, who was a guy of, uh, who is a guy of uh, multi-objective optimization. And uh, we uh, worked on multi-objective vehicle routing problems and we introduce what is called uh, uh, the balance uh, of, uh, vehicle routing problems in which you have to balance the length of the routes of the different uh, of the v of the different vehicles and for that uh, we develop mainly uh, heuristics based on uh, uh, on taboo search and uh, genetic algorithms uh, so that was one of the subjects I dealt with. Um, then I, uh, I worked, I started to work with Bernard, uh, Bernard Gendron by this time. Uh, Bernard visited me uh, in, big, in the beginning of the, the 2000. Uh, and uh, I had a real, raf, real life problem with um, a big company in France for delivering, de delivering parcels within uh, 24 hours. And uh, they wanted to have what they called um, uh, an adaptative system. This means that uh, you want to change from time to time your uh, distribution networks according to the demand. 
the main challenge is uh, you have to deliver all the uh, they had to deliver all the packages from Lille, which is in, it's located in the north of France, within 24 hours. So I had this problem, and uh, Bernard visited me, and we started to think about it. Uh, we developed some some method to solve this problem, uh, and uh, then we continued to work on this with Bernard, and uh, we really explore many things related to the two level and capacitated. This is a simplified version for sure for sure, so the two-level uncapacitated uh, facility location problem. Mm -hmm. uh, we did, uh, we proposed formulations, uh, and, uh, we analyzed, compare different types of formulations, we develop uh, a VNS algorithm to solve it approximately, we develop an exact method based on Lagrangian relaxation, which was uh, one of the favorite subjects of Bernard. So, yes, th that was an, uh, another important subject I worked on. And maybe a third one I would like to mention is uh, we had a lot of fun with uh, Gilbert working with a PhD student uh, called um, Eric Duchesne, working on the peripatetic uh, traveling salesman problem. <laughs> Uh, which is a nice problem in, w in which you have to determine uh, a number of cycles which are uh, edge disjoint, uh, covering, passing through all the nodes of the graph. And we develop a nice um, algorithm based on the branch and cut uh, algorithm uh, methods for this problem. Mm. So you're really busy yeah. at that time doing heuristics, exact algorithms for several yeah. interesting and relevant logistics problems. Yes, uh, in fact, I try to ba to balance my activities between uh, heuristic and uh, and uh, and exact methods. Mm -hmm. And by the by this time it was mainly uh, related to uh, branch and cut algorithms. Mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned Bernard, uh, he passed recently. I didn't have the chance to meet him. Uh, but I mean, it seems that everyone uh, loved him, and uh, I suppose that you surely miss him, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's very hard uh, because um, I mentioned this before. I met Bernard uh, when I was a postdoc in Montreal, and first of all, we 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 became friends. I mean, uh, uh, by chance. Somehow, uh, we met our wives at the same time in Montreal, uh, Luce and uh, Wissal. Uh, they became friends, friends, and uh, so we are very, uh, we were good friends. And um, and after that, uh, mainly uh, seven years later, six or seven, uh, we start we started to work together. So, uh, and uh, I, I add, and we had a lot of fun working together with, Ber with Bernard. Mm -hmm. I think uh, it was very nice. And Bernard was a gr great uh, researcher. Uh, he had many uh, important contributions uh, in mathematical programming uh, related to m integral modeling. And, um, and uh, also we, he was really uh, involved in everything he he, he did. Mm -hmm. So yes, uh, he miss we he miss me a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, you changed jobs after that ten year period working in Valenciennes. Uh, what made you do that? Well. Um, in fact, uh, I am an, an, an engineer, and I think uh, I had the opportunity uh, to to join an engineering school in Lille, Central Lille. So um, I think uh, it, uh, I'd like to uh, uh, to go to an engineering school because, uh, well, it's my it's my traditional environment uh -huh. 
And uh, so uh, since I had this opportunity, I decided to come back, uh, uh, to come in Lille. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, please correct me if I'm wrong, but I see that you turn attention to studying integrated problems, right? When you, yes. when that, when you went to, to yeah. Lille. Yes, th this is uh, clearly my, uh, my subject. Uh, and my, sub my my interest right now. Uh, um, in fact, uh, what uh, happens is at the end of my uh, period in Valenciennes, we had a big project related to uh, urban logistics. And as soon as you consider city logistics or urban logistics, you have a uh, different type of decision to take uh, simultaneously. Uh, the most classical ones are location decisions and routing decisions. Uh, you, you start uh, to have uh, multi-level uh, transportation systems. Uh, so naturally you have those integrated problems in in which you take simultaneously different types of decisions. Um, we all know that if you solve this problem independently, you are going to have a, a solution which are average, let's say. So uh, you have to tackle them jointly. And um, this was a, this is the reason why uh, uh, I started to work on this subject. I am still uh, working a lot on this subject right now. Mm -hmm. um, I see that you worked a lot on vendors decomposition approaches uh, and also trying to mix operational decisions with tactical decisions. Also, you know, math heuristics. So I, I see that you kind of became maybe more interested in doing exact uh, stuff uh, in this uh, last years, is that true? Yeah, uh, in fact, I, I think I had this, uh, uh, this always uh, in me in the sense that, uh, uh, you know, I, 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 um, I come from mathematics. I'm not a computer scientist. And uh, I think that uh, uh, somehow, uh, if I can plug a little uh, mathematical uh, uh, thing uh, in my algorithm, uh, I'm quite happy with that. So what I mean is, um, at some point, as I told you, even at the beginning, uh, when we de developed this taboo search, we had we had to solve some assignment problem, and we develop an we do not develop, we just use a classical assignment algorithm to solve this problem optimally and not uh, heuristically, which is standard. With the, with the time, uh, I just uh, my, uh, keep the same um, uh, trend, but I just enlarge the part of um, my interest in the fact that I, I, I like a lot to develop exact methods, but when the problem be, 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 uh, become too large or for other reason, I turn my uh, my exact algorithm into heuristic, into math heuristics. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I, I like that a lot. We developed recently something, some, uh, I think, good math heuristic uh, for some uh, vehicle routing problem, mm -hmm. um, and uh, uh, mixing uh, heuristic uh, approximation of the dual value and mm -hmm. column generation, a generation of columns uh, based on approximation of the, the duals. So we yeah, have it's uh, uh, that the subject I'm interested in right now. Um, I'm. I'm still interested in branch and cut, but I'm more interested now in decomposition methods. Even if I, uh, as soon as I can add cuts in, uh, in, in, in my uh, frameworks, I, I'm going to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it seems very interesting and it's also fascinating. I, 
uh, I also enjoy doing similar things that you mentioned. So, yeah. Um, Frederic, uh, you have been very productive throughout your entire career, working on many problems and proposing a number of models and algorithms. What are you not interested in doing anymore? Okay. Um, I think I'm not interested anymore in doing VQ routing. And I, I must explain why. Um, I think that uh, in vehicle routing, uh, our community has reached a point that in, in uh, that doing um, significant contribution becomes harder and harder. And uh, clearly, I'm not interested in solving the new version of the VRP with time window with some additional spatial constraints. Either I have uh, invented or I saw on a real life problem. Um, and this, you can just look to um, those informed survey on vehicle routing, look to the, the software you have uh, in the industry, uh, they are more and more powerful. Uh, I think uh, our community contribu contributes a lot. Uh, we proposed uh, many things in the past, but now I think uh, it's time to consider other problems. Um, there are still some variants of the, the VRP which are of interest, I must confess, and I'm still working on, the, on these uh, right now, so I should moderate a little bit myself. Um, for example, I have worked uh, and I'm with uh, my colleague, uh, Diego Cataruzza, uh, Maximo G, uh, and uh, Claudia Archetti, and a, a, a very nice, uh, very good PhD students, uh, Matt, Matteo. Um, Patrice, uh, we have worked on the multi-commodity VRP. So this brings something quite new because you don't have a single product, but you have several products. You can uh, deliver several times a customer delivering a subset of products to or commodity to a specific comer, uh, customer. So this is something somehow is new. But adding uh, a new uh, co constraint on the standard VRP, uh, well, we know I can see many papers like that. I'm not interested in this paper anymore, and even more, I'm I'm not interested in reviewing these papers. I am. This is a. I think we had quite recently very strong um, contribution. Uh, I would like to quote two of them. Uh, one is by Thibault Vidal and all the researchers uh, around him, uh, Michel Gendreau, uh, Christian Prince, Theodore Krenig. They have developed a very efficient uh, heuristics, which is able to solve many variants of the VRP. That's a very nice work. And this type of contribution is really valuable. And we had by the, your group in, uh, in Brazil and uh, uh, some pop, some people uh, in Bordeaux, um, including uh, Ruslan Sadikov and François Van Der Beek, they have developed almost the same thing for exact regarding exact algorithm. So that th this is nice. I mean, you develop an algorithm which is you just change two small things and you can solve another variant. This is a really of interest. Yeah. Developing the new uh, B algorithm or uh, genetic algorithm or whatever you want uh, to solve the VRP uh, with time window plus some specific constraints for me it's of no interest. Yeah, yeah. But it's my, my my opinion, you know. Sure, I agree but with I, you. Yeah. But I think I can have an opinion right now. I'm I'm sufficient sufficiently old to have an opinion on what is valuable or not. Yeah, I understand totally. Like when you mentioned the multi-commodity VRP, it adds uh, an, a 
important challenge and it becomes scientific relevant as well because it's not just adapting or tuning one uh, existing method. You have to come up with new ideas to efficiently solve that. So I understand completely. Yeah, and regarding the, the these uh, unified methods or generic methods, I, I, I just like them very much. I myself have developed also for routing and scheduling and, and also regarding the, uh, um, that VRP solver um, method, which uh, it's a generic solver to solve VRP exactly, right? Uh, VRP variance. Uh, it's, I think it's nice to give credit to Eduardo Shua. He's the mastermind of that. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. And, and he, of course, he, he wouldn't have done for it sure, also with the, help sure. of, with the help of Artur Pessoa and the other guys here. And, and exactly, they, exactly. Yeah, they did a lot, right? I was not able to mention all of No, them, no, come uh, on. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. In Brazil is, is fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, Frederic. After publishing so many papers, what makes you still motivated to do research? Um, in fact, um, let me tell you, um, for me, to, uh, doing research was uh, and is not a work, clearly. Uh, I think uh, the day, it's, uh, it's like an artist, I think, uh, if you start uh, thinking that painting is a work, uh, you don't uh, produce uh, a, a, uh, anymore. Uh, the, you're dead mm. from an artistic point of view. And for research, is exactly the same. I think if you consider that it is a work, uh, that you, you have to produce papers uh, because uh, for some reasons, and uh, if you don't produce papers for those reasons, you will have problems. Uh, you are dead. Mm -hmm. I think uh, uh, research is a question of passion. Uh, you have to be passionate. Uh, it's a fantastic job if you do it uh, like I just described. Um, and moreover, um, I think that uh, it's even more interesting if you do it with friends. And, uh, and uh, you are not obliged to work with people you dislike you are there is no obligation to work with people you dislike so you can work with friends I mean uh, or, and and, uh, and be with nice people so uh, so it's a it's a passion and, uh, and I, I like that a lot and I think uh, I will not stop at uh, <laughs> at least uh, not now yeah that's the joy yeah. of the academic life in the end yeah I think that uh, uh, there are some parts of our job which is uh, which some parts which are painful. Uh, let's say uh, I'm not fond of the administrative part, but uh, yeah, I know. we have to do it. We have to do it, but uh, maybe it's not the, the most the funniest part of our job. But uh, but yes, I think that research is uh, the the good the good part and uh, teaching can be very interesting uh, relation with students uh, because they are the new generation so we have to uh, pass them the message as uh, our own professor gave us uh, the same uh, gave us the same passion so we have to try to motivate them and uh, to create this passion absolutely uh, so uh, yes, that that's it. that is really mm -hmm. of interest. I don't see why you have to stop this. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you, yeah. Yeah. Are you addicted to doing research? I think so. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think so. I think so. Uh, it's uh, uh, the 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 only limits are the limits uh, we have in my family and uh, due to. Uh, uh, the family uh, constraints, I would say, mm -hmm. but uh, that's uh, the only limit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And talking about family, you and Luce are two academics working on the same research field. Uh, I had the chance to interview her too, and uh, she's yeah. super nice. And what does what does it mean in practice? Like you have like tension and competition. How do you handle this issue? Well, yeah, it's a. Uh, it, it can seem uh, somehow strange, um, but let's say it's very pleasant. 
Um, in fact, uh, we share the same passion. Uh, we share the same disappointments. Uh, we say we share the the same emotion. Uh, I mean, uh, when my wife has a, pub, a paper published in a gold journal, as I as I am as happy as she can be, uh, and clearly uh, the the reverse is true. Um, when we are disappointed because uh, some grant is rejected, by, but but. Uh, in this case, I, I understand if it's for her, not so often for her. Uh, yeah, or, uh, it is exactly the same uh, from her side. Um, I, I understand that this is not uh, suitable for everyone. Uh, I think uh, uh, because this creates uh, some, um, uh, you, you, you must impose to yourself some rules. Uh, you must have uh, limits. Uh, clearly, uh, we cannot work, uh, both of us, uh, we have a family, we cannot work, both of us, uh, the Sunday afternoon, that's, uh, that we cannot make it. Uh, so, you, uh, if uh, the, she, she has something very urgent to do, uh, and she told me, well, I have those uh, refree to complete before the end of the day, I understand, so I must take care, take care of the family, and uh, and vice versa. But it's uh, it's it's clearly necessary to to find a balance also between the private life and the professional life. But uh, to find compromise, uh, but it's very nice. Um, the main thing is, I think. Uh, this has to be done in the respect of, of, of uh, the other and uh, clearly to understand that both of us have uh, to develop uh, their their own career. One point we avoided uh, is to publish together too many papers. So we had some papers together, clearly. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, I think uh, we try to be uh, to have uh, our own network. Um, Luis is working on bilabel programming. I'm not working on bilabel programming a little bit, but not with her. Uh, I'm working with Martin, for example, Martin Labbe. But uh, and we try to have uh, yes different network. Many, these days, she's make, mainly working on an application with, related to energy management. Uh, clearly, I'm not working on that. I'm still on transportation and, and logistics. So, keep some things uh, separated, but uh, we can share many things together. Yeah, it's, it's very yeah. nice. Yeah. Maybe the other things I must confess is um, the planning of the conferences. Uh -huh. Because, you know, at some time, you must have our children are not so old. So at some time, uh, you must have some, some of us uh, at home. So clearly, you can not attend a conference at the same time. So there are some negotiation about the conference, uh, conference uh, planning, uh, which has to be done. Uh -huh. But yeah. we manage it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I know that you share the same hobbies like traveling and things like that. So, yeah. so yeah, it's very mm -hmm. nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, Frédéric, it was fantastic uh, to to have you here. Uh, um, I cannot thank you enough for your time. Uh, and I, I just I just enjoyed a lot listening to your stories and uh, your views on several topics. So, once again, merci. You are very welcome. It was my pleasure, Anand. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, so I expect a visit from you and Luz um, in the coming years uh, here. Uh, you know, so come to Jean Pessoa, come to Brazil. Uh, we'll be very happy to, to you know, show you some of our you know, uh, nature, you know, beaches. And you know, there are a lot of things to do here. So uh, okay. please, have that, please have that in mind. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> Clearly, we have I had it. Okay. Thank you very much, Simon. Okay. So, merci beaucoup, Frédéric. And we'll, let's keep in touch. 
uh, and let's hope to meet again uh, one of these days. Thank you, Anand. Yeah. Ciao. Bye. Ciao. Bye bye.